This is the crypto market and it is still boring. It did not go up or down. The price is still there. But what is interesting in this asset class is the adoption so that you actually understand whether this asset is undervalued or it is actually overvalued because you literally see a lot of people still putting in the argument that assets like XRP are still overvalued because it went up massively. It's going to come back down to these levels. So if you are an investor, then you are looking at how the fundamentals are evolving. So this is the talk about XRP Ledger. And this is actually a recent one from one of the reputable universities in the world. And they are talking about how it can be used for energy trading systems. So that's just one part of it. Now we go look at the other one. XRP Ledger is being studied to use in election architecture. So we have already seen how it is going to be used in the land register architecture in different countries. And now these are like different approaches. So if you actually remember like what happened with this area, which is one of the most important stuff, because that's actually for the foreign exchange market. We know how big it is, right? Yearly, it's like 1.2, 1.3 quadrillion dollars. So that's actually a big market. And this one is actually a central bank approved institution for providing foreign exchange. So on-demand liquidity getting there in this particular country is actually great. For them, they can actually use this for various different purposes to give low end cost settlement, right? So they really don't need to hold pre-funded capital. They literally have the liquidity arrangement set up using XRP. Great. But still, you will see some issues here and there. Like if you play this video, you'll actually see her using the term on-demand liquidity. And we'll actually go there. We'll go through that. Don't worry. We'll actually try and explain what she's talking about mm -hmm, and give you the right perspective. Now, she was here on the IMF, right? So this will actually help you to understand between the reality and a little bit of hype. Now, kind of name. If you are looking at how things again evolve and how the exposure is coming, this is recent one. These are not the two old five year old stuff, right? All of this, which you are looking at is kind of giving you that idea. Now, say you go to the top, you just want to see like what it is, right? This is a talk about cross border payments and it's actually, you know, JP Morgan. So now here you actually go down to see what's the talk system interoperability. Mm, that's great. And then you see this FX liquidity provider. Mm, that's again great because inside this one, when you actually search for XRP, what do you actually see is something of interest for us because the main topic here is about the central bank digital currency. And when you read through this, you'll actually get more understanding because say, for example, if you watch the recent Swell event, you actually seen MasterCard executed there talking about something, right? Now, these are, now that's speculation, but it still gives you an understanding of what they are looking on the end of clearing and settlement for the payment solutions, right? For the payment solution. So this fundamentally is actually showing you big things are coming. If you just search XRP and you come on here, they actually talk about this. Now, in which perspective is it being taken? You are looking at Ripple along with Finality, Swift, and other traditional systems. So that's actually really great to observe something like this being presented there. But yes, they are not fully aware of what it is and they are not giving you a proper, clear reality there. It's a lot of rigged information in this area because it's related to Ripple and they don't want you or the entire governments to use this document and cite them. Right. So now if you are here, you can actually, you know, go now I, I've retweeted this one. So if you want to watch this, this is actually interesting. So if you watch this one, you actually get the idea of what the liquidity means, how on demand liquidity works. Each and everything is going to help. Now history, right? Even before the actual product was named on demand liquidity, the X rapid was the actual name, right? Even at that time, it was used, this term. Why? XRP to offer on-demand liquidity. So the product was not on-demand liquidity at that time. The product was X-Rapid. 
Now we are gonna go into detail. We are gonna actually go through and give you the right perspective. Welcome to the Scientific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys learn how to become the next top 10 percentage of this world. Now, technically, we are looking at the market and we are like, okay, it's not doing much. It is still inside this pattern. We've been talking about this pattern from some time. It is still evolving inside that. So either we should break down or we should go up. We need a break to the upside, right? Now we are not observing any of those. Here in XRP, you can literally observe the price, you know, is so slow. It come down to the support and it actually bounces from the, it get resisted here. So this is a clear pattern here and it's a descending triangle. Usually we, it actually breaks the downside, but here we are making consistent higher lows after putting in a double bottom here. So we want to actually see whether this previous resistance is now acting as a support range. So that will be on the technical side. Now we'll actually come here. We'll try to give you the right perspective about this video. Now, it's completely up to you. You are listening to what Christine Lagarde is saying and then my explanation. You can take it or reject it. If you have a different opinion, do let me know in the comment section below so there is no confusion. We can clear it. The money market funds experienced acute liquidity strains. You all remember that. So what she clarified there or started with is money market funds experienced severe liquidity issue crunch right now then listen what she is actually bringing on to that that's the explanation in my understanding this reflected a structural liquidity mismatch at the heart of their operations with them offering on-demand liquidity to investors while at the same time investing in more illiquid assets that is because we must then she's continuing to actually give you the narrative what they, the money market funds, were doing, right? They were taking in money. Like in money markets, you actually have two sides, the investors and the borrowers or lending and borrowing. That ac actually happens there. If you go here in the IMF website, you'll actually get this. You have two sides for the money market funds where on the one side you'll see like you know hedge fund non-financial institutions everyone actually come in and borrow money mm -hmm. but where do they actually get this money the money is actually coming into the market again from money managers retail investors who are actually looking for short-term investments these are not long term it can be overnight towards a year or just below that that's short term so now we understand like two sides now, what Christine is actually highlighting here is on the one end, they had liquidity coming in. But then where they actually put this one on the other side, here you understand like it has two side. One, the money is coming in. Then the money is going out. Money came in from liquid area, but it did not go into a liquid area. That became an issue. Now, a lot of people directly just say, okay, liquidity means XRP. No, that's not the actual terminology. Liquidity means how soon you can sell or buy an asset in market. And what's the spread? If the spread is like 20 percentage, mm, that's not a liquid asset, basically. So if you can't buy instantly with lower spread and sell instantly, you really don't have liquidity. Now, I'll give you an idea or an example. Imagine a big money manager like Kevin O'Larry, which is, you know, not imagine reality. Put in money into FTX, FTT, imagine, fine, great. Even though the FTT is still there, the value is zero, he can't actually get out. No one else is actually buying at the other end if he literally want to sell a billion dollar. For that, you can go into the market. Mm -hmm. You just look like where FTT is and just look at what is the liquidity for this day. So we can actually go here, just type in FTT for this example and look at literally what's the daily volume. So this is your daily volume, $20 million. So if you really want to actually do a hundred million, 200 million or a billion, you really don't have the volume in. So the liquidity is not there for you. Now, if it's like, you know, $100, $200 and you want to sell at this rate, mm, it's fine. 
Now, let's actually play the rest. Contend with potentially new sources of financial stability risk. For example, one area in which the financial system is adapting to new technologies is in the so-called crypto assets and decentralized finance, DeFi. Here, Astri continued to give you the narrative of they giving on-demand liquidity on one hand and then putting that investment into an illiquid area is not on-demand liquidity, which we are seeing, okay? Then what you just heard is same talk. Now you have new technology to actually provide liquidity using the decentralized finance, DeFi, right? So again, listen to this. Structural liquidity mismatch at the heart of their operations, with them offering on-demand liquidity to investors while at the same time investing in more illiquid assets. That is so it's clear on one end, this money market fund, because she used the term there, continuing that sentence. So them being so much liquid for the investors, as she uses, investors, money managers and the investors, they take in their money, give them instruments, fine. It can be like, you know, treasury bill, term deposit, uh, anything. And on the other side, they offer borrowers. Now imagine that borrower happens to be FTX. What happens to your money? That's what she's actually talking about. So there is issues in the system where you really don't have these liquidity. So anything with liquidity is literally not XRP. But yes, the terminology on-demand liquidity is XRP ledger. And the level of adoption which we are observing for that is sky high. But I understand only in like rare occasions you actually have big banks doing Forex inside this, providing that liquidity. It is there, but it's not at that scale. We can observe. Now, this is from Stidass, right? Shout out to him. One of the oldest guy here in this community and he put out legit data. Now look at this. It kind of gives us clear idea. It's most low, mostly it is remittance firms. Fine. So either you can put it into your bank account or it can be a cash payout at the other end. A lot of people still do that to these days. If you are sending money to India, a lot of people still do that. So it is not used for your short-term instruments of finance because as soon as you send money, mostly it's the cost of living being sent. People take that out, spend it, right? So these are not in the bank or any instruments of investments, mostly. And that is one of the reasons why you have to look at the other side and listen to everything fully. Then we get this thing. I'm like, okay, mm. Now, we initially, we've been listening to different dates when XRP is going to moon, like November 21st, then, you know, all these dates. Now, here, Charles is actually giving you a perspective where he's talking about there is a possibility that this case may end on December 15th. Now, it's just a rumor, but we don't know the reality behind it. Now, on 13th, we have macro data announcements coming out and we really don't know whether this is going to happen. But the way he actually explains at the end about Cardano and the entire ecosystem of decentralized ecosystem outside US and all, it did not actually feel great. If he is true, then he is thinking about a negative outcome. But, you know, we've been listening to a lot of different people giving us a lot of different dates and most of the time it did not work yet. So right now, yes, we are looking for December 15th and if that happens, it's great, but it should be positive. If it's negative, then the next question is, okay, now Ripple, the company is going to move out. They will settle there, then they will move out. Where will be that? Can it be Singapore? Can it be Switzerland? Can it be UK? It's all regions with regulatory clarity and once they are there it's done yeah the u.s banks are outside they cannot use this product but once you are in other end of the world you are using this product so the amount of adoption is sky high it is still increasing on a regular basis we've been observing this from last five years and it is still continuing on a different basis. So if you are here looking at value, then you are literally looking for the price and saying like, okay, the price of XRP, the asset is down massively, but the rate of adoption and the value is high. 
So mostly an investor, as an investor, we would be looking at undervalued asset. But yes, I agree, if you bought in here or bought in here or bought in here, it's the same value here, right? So just your waiting period is so much if you do not take any profits here. If you skimmed some here, oh, still it's like a long waiting, but you add something to buy back somewhere here because we didn't know the Luna crash was coming in, right? In this perspective, the value is still there. What you need is the patience and that's going to be the hard part. And guys, if you are listening to this and receiving value, please do hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have five more minutes, please do watch this new video of mine. There's a new channel of mine where I do weekly one video. So if you like the content, please do hit that like and subscribe button for that too. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.